welcome to another edition of Strange Days Live, brought to you from Southern California on this Friday, February the 9th, 2024, at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. We have a great show for you guys today. I know all of you guys have joined this night at one time or another because of uh, a love for a certain somebody, and that was Mr. Art Bell. He is the common thread that brings us all together into the show. And today, I'm blessed enough to have Mr. John Steiger, who is the creator and the man behind a website that should all be listed under your uh, bookmarks. This is artbellfiles.org. So for all the Art Bell lovers out there, do yourself a favor and visit this site. It's extensive, the amount of knowledge and the amount of um things that you can get from here it's, a, it's an amazing work of love uh, that's been done by uh, mr uh, john steiger who will be here in a few minutes get your questions ready for him i want to post our link here for the show for you guys to come in if you have any questions now by all means there's no experts in any kind of field so john will not have every single answer you guys desire has nobody really has but he has an extensive knowledge uh, of the show history, of art history, as far as his radio personality. And um, his website is quite amazing. I just came across it a few nights ago and I was able to speak directly with John and invite him into the show. And he was gracious enough at kind of like a last minute to join us here. And uh, I'm very glad he did. He's in uh, East Coast time, so he's kind of burning uh, the midnight oil, if you will, in order to, to be here with us and share his insights into our beloved Art Bell. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce Mr. John Steiger in the show in one second here. And let me just get things set up for you guys. And here we go. John, thank you so much for joining us. How are you? Thank you. Art Bell's with us too. <laughs> I love that. That's a great shirt. Well, I just want to thank you so much for uh, for coming on on such a short notice and uh, to to kind of you know impart some of your love for art as we all share. So thank you so much from the show uh, for you being here tonight. The pleasure is mine. So John, um, tell us a little bit about. Um, how did you first get into listening to Art Bell? Well, what happened is, is my mother-in-law, of all people, uh, introduced me to Art Bell um, back in the 1990s because she was uh, an insomniac at the time. And um, she couldn't sleep at night, so she uh, listened to the radio instead of, instead of watching t television. Now, she lived in... Uh, Long Island, New York, and uh, got uh, uh, all of Art's uh, broadcasts in the beginning in the uh, 1990s, and she listened to him uh, virtually every night um, that he was on. Um, and so then she, you know, she talks obviously to my wife uh, a lot, and then it got the word got to me that, and uh, in fact, she taunted me that uh, here she was listening to this great and interesting uh, show about paranormal and UFOs and, and all those types of things. And uh, it certainly was too bad that I couldn't listen to it because uh, I had to work and, uh, you know, I had to sleep uh, and it was on during my sleeping uh, hours. And I said to myself, you know what, she's not going to... Uh, get me on this. And so what I uh, started doing was I would um, sleep a little in the, in the evening, nap a little, and then uh, try and uh, have the radio on and listen to Art Bell myself. Uh, and this was during the 1990s uh, again. And um, now to be honest, I don't remember a whole lot of the shows back then because my, I, that was only one of my interests at the time. Um, but um, it, it was fascinating. And I do remember uh, um, uh, listening to art. Uh, I really um, uh, got, in, got into him again 
Um, because if you recall, he had the, the break from yes. about 2010 uh, when he stopped doing Coast altogether. I, I think he just got disgusted with the direction Coast was going at that point. Right, right. And he also had the, you know, the things going, his, the immigration problems with his family in the Philippines and all that. And so it, it took some time off from radio and then came back with his own show on the first one was on Sirius. That's right. And I found out he's coming back. So I went out and I didn't, I wasn't going to listen to him in the car, you know, go out and listen to him in the car all night or whatever. I bought a Sirius radio for in my house. And I, uh, and it only worked, but this is how crazy I, you know, how committed I was, it it only seemed to work the best down in my basement. <laughs> and so I set up a, 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 and now it was only on about three or four nights a week live then. So for those three or four nights, I was sleeping down in the basement to Art Bell while he's on Sirius. Now, the thing is, it only lasted about two months. And then, the you know, there were all the streaming issues and whatever. And then, right they basically had the falling out, uh, which is very um, sad and unfortunate. And I felt, oh, my goodness, I invested, you know, it costs, it costs some money. Yeah. I, mean, it's not, I it, bet. Not yeah. expensive. Yeah, not, yeah, not a cheap money. It didn't me totally out. But, it, but it, you know, it, it ended up being, you know, I got, I got rid of it because that's the only reason I had it. I wasn't, you know, a serious fan, a serious radio fan. I was, I was an Art Bell fan. Sure. So, and then, and then, you know, I, to be honest, I, I remember that aspect, the 2015 show while it was live, I don't, um, I don't remember. I, I mean, I must've listened to it some, but I, I see, I was, I was doing other things. You uh, mean the, the, the midnight in the desert is sort midnight of last in the desert. Yeah. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Which lasted longer. I mean, that lasted for, I don't, I don't know. It's a, Five or six months. As, as, as yeah, I, it, lasted, it lasted quite a bit more than the other show did, for sure. Right. So, um, but uh, but I really got into it after I I, I had I had, I wrote a book about uh, uh, a, a book of three plays about UFOs, the big cases: Roswell, Rendlesham Forest over in England, right, and then the uh, the abduction, the alleged abduction of the uh, secretary of the uh, general of the United Nations by aliens. And this occurred on no, uh, the date is November 30th, 1989. The secretary general at that time was uh, Javier Perez de Cuellar um, uh -huh. from, I believe from Chile, maybe Peru, but I think from Chile. Okay. And, 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 uh, and he actually only recently died, like maybe 2020 or something. He, he lived to be 100, I believe. So as um, far as you said, you wrote a it's, a, it's a factual set of events, a factual documentation. Well, of no, all... no, well, I, I wrote play. They're, they're actually, they're, they're, they're like docudramas. You I know, see. They're, 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 they're historical fiction. You know, they're based, they're based on Roswell. They're based on Rendlesham Forest. They're based on this abduction of the Secretary General of the United Nations, and it's alleged because I, um, the Secretary General officially denied that it ever happened. Okay. But Bud Hopkins, who was a famous UFO researcher and appeared on Coast to Coast and 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 Dreamland with Bud on uh, numerous times, like at least five times. Um, and this was during the time when he was writing, and then and, you know he wrote he wrote a book about it called Witness. It's a very good book, Bud Hopkins' mm -hmm. book on this case. Any, anyway, um, Bud said that he had gotten a, uh, a a communication, I think, in the form of a letter from allegedly from Perez de Cuellar, but it matched up with some known examples of Perez. De Cuellar's uh, stationery and 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 writing and the signature uh -huh. and whatever and in which he said, well, I, it, it, I know I've officially 
uh, denied that, 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 you know, the alien abduction occurred, but it actually did occur. But That's I right. have to officially deny it, you know, because of the political situation. No, absolutely. I mean, when so, you're in that kind of limelight, you have to deny even though things, uh, strange things occur to you. Now, right. if somebody was interested in uh, reading, how can I go about obtaining a copy? Is this available? Can I buy it? Or It's called the UFO Trilogy. It's available on Amazon.com. Uh, you, can, you can find it there. You okay. might be. Uh, it's a new copy is probably going to be about the same price as if you found a, a used copy. Um, you know, from like ABE Books as a used. Uh, uh, okay. Well, tell you what, I anyway. just found it, and I'm going to put it in our links. I found it here. It's okay. an Amazon. It's called UFO Trilogy Dramas Stage. Dramas, no, well, dramas for the stage. Dramas for the stage, right? That, I'm sorry, I just read it off the link. So yeah. uh, no, this is was, by, and I and I had to go through. Uh, I couldn't find a publisher in America or even in Canada. I had to find uh, go to the United Kingdom for it. But Philip Mantle, who's a pretty famous uh, uh, UFO researcher in uh, uh, Great Britain. Um, runs a publishing house over there called uh, Flying Disc Press. Got it. And uh, he uh, agreed to publish it. Wonderful. Uh, and, I'll, uh, I'll be getting yeah. uh, I'll be getting my hands on this uh, because yeah. it sounds like very interesting. I wanna I, I'm definitely gonna check this out. And you know what? What I'm gonna do? I'm, I'm gonna read this. I'm gonna have you back so we can actually talk about the book itself. Okay. How about that. But remember, I'm, I'm well. I'm a little rusty on that, but I'll I'll, br I'll brush up on it for that for that one. <laughs> no, that's fine. Now, okay, so we kind of left out in in regards to the whole Art Bell. We left out at uh, approximately 2015, let's just say, minute in the desert. From there on, we all know what happened. He made some random shows here and there. He had a, a farewell show, I believe it was in December of 2015. Correct. Well, not to, December 2015 is when he left Midnight in the Desert. Okay. He did appear once as a guest host, and it was still called Midnight in the Desert when Heather Wade took over. Yeah. And March, March 11th, I think, is the date, 2016. As far as I know, one time he guest hosted. Okay. And, um, and I have that, uh, the highlights of that covered under. Uh, um, I'm reading them. You're the, absolutely the right. Yeah, Arts Radio Bio, which is one of the uh, web pages on artbellfiles.org. Perfect. Um, Arts Radio Bio. There's many, many uh, uh, tidbits and and uh, um, just it, it, interest, interesting stories on there. They're not whole segments or whole shows in, in the radio bio, but they all relate uh, uh, to art, and it's art talking about um, his beliefs and, you know, the paranormal, UFOs, etc., cetera, and um, just everything that Art would talk about that I found interesting, I, tr I, if I would try to include that, um, yes. and it compiled up into a bio. If you, I mean, the, the, the main one on Coast from 92 to 2010 is about 150 some pages, and yeah, you know, no, all together, you, know, you, count, you count the other shows, and, and his and also a special section on his defamation lawsuits because yeah. it, it's he, very he, extensive uh, yeah. the research you've done and for the listen the, the new listeners that are out there I, I am interviewing Mr. John Steiger uh, who is John Steiger he is a gentleman who is uh, a passionate fan just like we all are of Art Bell but he's taking it a step uh, uh, further, he has a website, uh, artbeltfiles.org.org, that you guys should visit, uh, in which he's chronologically detailed most, I think you have uh, probably 99% of all the shows ever produced, correct? I have, I have, I, I can't say that, it, that it's 100% accurate, but right. it so gets right. more accurate over time. And it's, kept it at 99, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and and the other thing I want to emphasize is everything on artbellfiles.org is free. You will not be charged. There's no fee to go on for any of the information. I don't even accept donations. Yes. Um, and you can and so have it, it. It's a labor of love. It's free and there's absolutely no audio, okay? 
It's all John's painstakingly taken his his time, and he's transcribed shows by hand. So uh, there's no audio there, so there's no copyright issues. Everything is free, uh, and you guys can get lost within that website. I mean, it's fantastic. I uh, I just came across it uh, about a week ago. I had no idea this existed. I mean, this is like uh, akin to a concordance, as John had mentioned it for you, a concordance uh, uh, in regards to Art Bell. You know, if you needed to do a, a school dissertation on Art Bell, this will be your probably your main uh, your main website to do all the research. It's fantastic, uh, artbellfiles.org. And we have live with us John Steiger. Now, John, um, you said you listen in the '90s and you listen through the 2000s. Um, what's something memorable that's stuck to you? What was it? A, maybe a guest, or maybe a show, or, or maybe a, a caller, or, or uh, what's one of the things uh, about an Art Bell show that sticks uh, to you the most? The, the outstanding thing, uh, 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 and all the shows that he hosted have this in common. And that is his engaging personality. He had a personality like no other person that I've ever heard on the radio that would draw you in and interest you in whatever topic uh, was the topic of the day to be discussed. Now, the, the topics are uh, generally speaking, of the paranormal world, but the paranormal world is humongous. Yes, and, and it just just runs a a, a a vast gamut of uh, of topics. And um, he had he was able to get on because because so many people listen. He was able to get on so many interesting guests. And the thing is that these aren't people, you know, like. He had a few Hollywood people on or a few, you know, what uh, notable people from, you know, like politics or, or the news and, and whatever. But for the most part, these people were just people who, who delved into strange topics mm -hmm. and he would delve into them. Yes, and absolutely. They, I agree with you. That's what made him so unique uh, is the fact that, uh, he just, you know, the shows just have this capacity to draw you in, like like anything uh, I've ever experienced. I, I can, you know, I can attest to that. It's just there, there's something. There's a piece behind the show. There's something that just kind of makes you feel at home, if you will. Sort of, if you're talking to to a to a family member you you care about and that you want to keep listening to. He knew how to talk to people. He knew how to relax the guest. And yes. he knew how to extract the information from them, the, the interesting information. He also knew how to weed out the chaff, you know, mm -hmm. things that weren't um, that interesting. Uh, like no other radio personality that I'm aware of, especially compared to the other people who now are, are doing the – similar type shows, you know, on coast or, or yeah. elsewhere. I mean, it's just, it, it's a really a unique talent that he had. And no, definitely. It's, it's, it's a once in a lifetime talent. So narrowing down um, the question I posed to you earlier. So what, what is either a guest or either a call that stuck to you? Just one particular that made, um, that made it, uh, I don't know, that kind of resonates with you. Do you have uh, anything well, well, like that? I, 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 it, they can't, they can't, they are subject to change. My favorite is subject to change. So as, as of today, as Evelyn, of today. <laughs> <laughs> I have to take two. Evelyn Paglini, uh, the, 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 uh, who, the practitioner of natural magic. She didn't love being called a witch or, or, or what she did being called witchcraft, but essentially that was it. But okay. she, she was just, uh, she knew how to answer uh, callers questions of people who thought they were c cursed or, or, or possessed or, or, you know, under attack uh, by the, the dark side. And, and she knew how to calm down people and, and what, you know, 
was able to, now she couldn't do an absolute thorough uh, uh, examination of your problem on the air, sure. but she gave, she gave enough to eat the callers that you knew that if you call her and engaged her, you, you're going to have a fighting chance uh, against the, uh, the uh, evils of the other side. Um, and, and she was an engaging personality herself. Now, she also did uh, predictions. And I, I, I mean, that, that was fine, but I didn't, I, I really liked her, her um, uh, natural magic and, and witchcraft uh, aspects a little more than the, the prediction uh, um, aspect. aspects. Yeah. And so what is your, the, the second one that you have there? The second one would have to be Mel Waters of Mel's Hole. Male's hole. And yeah. That's, uh, now that the probably the reason r right now is, is I just finished transcribing the fifth and final Mel's hole. So I have all five broadcasts in totality. It's now it's under Tall Tales. It's on the Tall Tales web page. Right. Because I personally I don't believe it's true. Uh, but I also believe it's absolutely fascinating, and there are many, many, many entertaining and fascinating aspects to what Mel Waters described over the course of five shows. And these shows ran also, uh, I think, two, two, three of them were in the 90s, two at least in 97, and then there were two others about five years later in 2002, if I'm remembering. It could be 2000. You know, this is why I, I disclaim that I'm an expert. I, I don't know the you know the exact dates. I just That's okay. Know, That's close. I know, yeah, I, I mean close enough. it's there. It's under you can find it, you can find every word uh that um Art Bell and uh and Mel discussed. It's a fascinating now it's best to listen to it, but what I've provided with the transcription is it's if, if something passes you by or if you want to compare, like, what did he say in 2002? Uh, let's listen to that. What did he say back in 97? And you can quickly find it, um, you know, researching it. Go on uh, any of the files, the PDF files, and, and hit Control-F. You can find text. Uh, leads you to whatever text you desire that you think is in there, you know, like – yeah. Uh, width of the hole, or or uh, you know the black light that's uh, allegedly came out of the hole, or the Roosevelt dime. You know he had the 1943 Roosevelt dime, which uh, um, that's Roosevelt right. Yeah, he did. Roosevelt he did. died in 45, so a 43 dime does not exist, except that it exists in Mel's hole. So what is it about uh, the story itself that had made you maybe not a, a believer that it's a, it's a real story? Well, because it just it changed so much over the time and just got wilder and wilder. Got I it. mean, if it was if it was just the one and people also went up there and you can find the Internet, people went up there and they looked around and they really have never been able to find it. Um, you know, f with any certainty, um, mm -hmm. and, you know, and the, and the whole stuff about, you know, uh, you know, the government took it over and then they started paying him hundreds of thousands of dollars uh, a month's <laughs> rent. And then he goes over to Australia and founds the, the, uh, Wombat, uh, research Institute or whatever. And uh, does, you know, I mean, it's, it just got, he got a little bit off. He loses all the money, and and then he ends up in Skid Row in San Francisco, and uh, you know, yeah, it's it, a little bit too much. It's the, it's it's the, it's the work. It sounds it sounds the, like the work of fiction. Yes, not plausible. So, from all these, what made you um, what made you create your site? Fascination with Art Bell. Okay. Fascination with all of the 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 whole. The Art Bell universe. Okay. Now I, I like how, the, I like how to, I, I like I like that word. I like how you put that art bell the, universe. The, the, you know, I try to model myself a little bit. I, I mean, I didn't do this from the get-go, but looking back on, on what I've been doing, I've been doing this for four years. 
Okay. There's a, there's 90 some files up on there. There's over 2,500 pages. Okay. That's a mm -hmm. lot of transcription and statistics gathering and, and the, the, you know, forming the biography of Art Bell, et cetera, et cetera. So, I mean, I've been busy. I've been doing this, you know, most days of those four years. And the, the person that I try to compare myself to, not that, and I don't know that this is an accurate comparison, but, you know, Arts had one of his famous guests who made, uh, I think, the, the third most appearances on the show was named Peter Davenport. And Peter yes. Davenport always brought new UFO cases uh, to the fore, cases of interest. This was what Peter Davenport was, and he's still alive, so is still interested in. I'm not. I, he may have retired though from the uh, National UFO Reporting Center, but he he did it for many many years, and this is what he focused on. He focused on the world of UFOs. Well, I am trying. For what Peter Davenport is to UFOs, I'm trying to do for Art Bell. Now, my universe is uh, bound by time because Art was uh, did paranormal uh, shows for about 25 years, 1992 through 2016 being the last one. Right. You, you include both of the end dates; it's 25 years. Now, there, but within that um, 25 year span. You're talking over 2,000 individual broadcasts, 2,000 individual broadcasts. Now, the, the lasted uh, Dreamland was shorter, but, but uh, you know, the show, the, the Coast to Coast shows, which is the majority of them, were four or five hours a night. Right. Well, you're, you're talking uh, maybe it's not 10,000 hours, but it's Close enough. probably like 8,000. Yeah. Probably 7,000 hours, yeah. 7,000 or 8,000 hours. It's a tremendous amount. And to try and get a grasp of what is there, I, almost, I, know it's, I know it's interesting. It, it's, it's, and it's endlessly fascinating. It's almost a year worth of listening. Uh, the, his body of work is almost uh, about, if you were to listen to it for, it comes up to about 290 days or so, about a year give or take, because some shows were longer than others. But, yeah, he has an extensive body of work that was left. Right. And you couldn't do it anyway you, because you, the human body needs to sleep. You probably have to take the full year. <laughs> you probably that's take long, years, And yeah. that's all you're doing for that year. You're listening to Art Bell and sleeping. Thanks. Now, let me ask you a, a few questions here. Now, uh, I, I, what uh, is uh, Area 2000 the first Art Bell show? Uh, no, actually, Coast to Coast w was the first paranormal shows. Um, I looked this up recently um, because it, ca it came up on uh, one of the Facebook pages. Um, there were, I think, four shows he just he broached on. The first guest uh, was John Lear. He okay. was on the first two shows. And then... The first, the first one was John Lear and Bob Exler, who was a UFO investigator from the East here. And, and he, I don't think Art ever had Bob Exler uh, back on again. And for what year? Reason. What year was this? Uh, the first broadcast of Coast to Coast. It's in March of 1992. Okay. Now, now that's not the first broadcast of Coast to Coast. It's the first Coast to Coast paranormal themed broadcast oh, so see coast to coast was originally political really was, that, oh yeah it was okay, a political and, show and art bell was part of that political show or no well, art bell, bell was you know he was like a um a, 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 well i don't know if he's gets con as conservative as rush limbaugh but he uh, his show was a political show like Rush Limbaugh's was a okay, political got show. Okay, yeah. Oh, and there's no, there's probably no shows, no show catalog out there that we can listen to when there was, it was that format. Huh? It's probably extremely. But, but there are, but there are some politicians. I mean, he had, he had a, a representative from California named Bob Dornan on. He had Christopher Ruddy, who was, is a conservative uh, uh, commentator and, and uh, founded uh, Newsmax. God. Um, okay, had, yeah, big names. And, and he had on uh, people, a, a woman named Linda Thompson, 
of uh, five times. Now I haven't heard these are hard to find. I haven't found that yet, but about Waco, you know, yeah. the whole Waco tragedy, David right. Koresh and all that. Right. Yeah, of course. Yeah. This is, uh, is my, my uh, primary source for uh, kind of scrounging and looking for it. I go to internet archive. Right. Uh, do you have any other sources where you can like, or how do you come up upon these well, shows? Well, there's, I, okay. I, I, I'm comfortable saying that the official source for Coast to Coast, which is Coast to Coast AM, it costs $6.95 a month, and you have crystal clear broadcasts of over 400 Art Bell shows in their entirety. Right. It's Coast to Coast. That I don't, and they also have that, and there's two new ones every Wednesday, and then they also have uh, somewhere in time, yes, uh, on there, and that's one new show every Saturday night. But and, they don't go back to the early '90s. Those are hard to find. Well, Those no, they they there's some 1994s back there. There there okay. are some. Um, it, it it, but the thing is, it's. It's hit and miss. You can't, you, you know, it's it's a spot. 400 out of 2,000 is what, 20%, I think? I don't know. So yeah. I think it's 20%. Yeah. So they, they have a lot more that they could release. And they should release it. They should, what they, they need to no, offer a subscription to all, to all of it. So yeah. well, the thing is that a lot of people that are into Art Bell, they're not into George. So um, well, you don't have to. I I'm I don't listen to George. I don't I I don't. I'm not particularly. In, I'm not, I don't. I'm not anti George. I'm not anti George. Uh, I'm not anti anyone on no. those. But but I don't. I listen to Art Bell. So we established 1992 as being the year zero, if you will, for coast to coast paranormal. Okay, correct. Where after that, where so where does area 2000 fall in? Area 2000 was the forerunner to Dreamland. It okay. was a uh, a, a bolt, I'm pretty sure it was Sunday evening show. Yes. Dreamland like, came out of Sundays, right? Okay, and it was again, it's like two to three hours, and it's focused mostly on UFOs, and there was one other topic. And I, that other topic escapes me right now. And the typical format, uh, th there was about 30 of these shows, somewhere okay. around 30 of these shows. The typical format was to have Linda Moulton Howe come on and give her That's report. Right. George Knapp yes. appeared on virtually all of them, and he yes. gave some news about UFOs. That's right. And then there would be the the expert guest, usually a UFO investigator, like a Stanton Friedman. Um, um, well, there's, there's a whole, you know, okay, I'm, so I'm not, not, you know, it's, it's, it's slipping. The exact Stanton Friedman's a perfect example. I think Bud Hopkins, John Mack, I think was on there. I know and, that and, also Bob Lazar was in those shows at, at some earlier time too. Bob, Bob Lazar, though, I think I don't think he was on Area Two Thousand. I think he was on the early Coast shows. He was okay. on the second Coast show, the second one in nineteen ninety two. Now, okay, Area Two Thousand didn't start till ninety three. So these shows, Coast to Coast Weekly, then we have Area Two Thousand on the weekends. This will be on Sundays. This will be the beginning, and then they phased out of the Area Two Thousand, and they just kept Coast to Coast and. Uh, Right. Well, what happened is Robert Bigelow, you've probably heard that name. Yes. Robert Bigelow funded Airy 2000. It, right, because really it, was, it was a Bigelow Foundation show. Yeah. It didn't have commercials other than, you know, for, you know, Bigelow. Okay? Right. Um, but he only did it for a few months. Okay. okay. I mean, it's expensive. So, so he decided I'm going to do it. And then, then he stopped. But then Art said, "This is this is uh, important, and it's you know it's a different aspect than I get with Coast to Coast." So I want he he talked um, Premier Networks into continuing it under the name Dreamland. Got it. So eventually Dreamland, and now Dreamland lasted. Art Dreamland may still exist. I don't know if Whitley Streamer's still doing it. What happened is Art did about two hundred shows over the course of 
several years. These were the Sunday only shows. The Sunday, yeah. yeah but actually, it's my understanding that they were actually taped on Fridays. Really? So the Bart would have the, have the he did he did two shows on Fridays. I oh. now he, don't quote me on that because I, but that's my understanding. Okay. Um, and so they were actually on tape, and see it. And now, dream, typical dream. I George Knapp stopped because he, uh, he. Well, I don't. I don't know if he didn't. You know, he's a very busy newspaper man, so he stopped contributing to Dreamland. But Linda Moulton Howe kept going, and uh, she would have a report most of the time. Occasionally, Peter Davenport might come on too with the UFO news. He was on uh, Dreamland, to my understanding. And then you'd have the the. Uh, but it, what at, at Dreamland though wasn't as limited to just UFOs and the and the other topic that uh, escapes me right now. Dr okay. Dreamland ran ran more uh, of um, uh, you know more like Coast. I mean, but a, a broader spectrum of sure. the paranormal. And then after that, you also have the introduction of uh, of, of new uh, of other shows. I don't know if the, the, those. What is the the timeline as far as from from that? Because then I know we have also. Um, what is the other shows that Art Bell had? Uh, Serious, you mean that that one and and uh, and uh, Midnight in the Desert? No, those are those are. Uh, you're talking those are about after, yeah, those are like kind of newer, but he did have other shows. Uh, we well, said Coast, yeah. Coast to Coast just continued. Coast to Coast yeah. went from ninety two to two thousand ten. Okay, perfect. So that's there, the one that there, kind. Of... There, there, there were five shows. Art did, Bell did five paranormal radio shows. That's what I want to get at. Okay. Yes, he did five. Okay, Coast to Coast was the main show, right? And that's well over a thousand. Uh, um, I don't have the exact number in front of me. It's it's on it's under statistics. You can find it uh, on the website. Um, but well over a thousand. Uh, it'd be on radio calendar. You'd see it probably on the first page. Sure. Um, that then he did. Okay, so that that's the mainstay. And yeah. then there's about two hundred Dreamlands. Uh, well, Airy two thousand before Dreamland. Yeah. Then then dreamland okay now coast is running this whole time then coast right. then just coast because he dreamland he passed over he, he you know it was he got big and and didn't have time we want to devote the time he's you know he's older getting tired or so uh, uh, we'll let whitley streber take that over so whitley sure. streber took that over so so then um coast to coast from uh, 92 to 2010. Now he was the main host up until with one exception uh, from 2000, 2001 part, the best part of a year in there, uh, he retired, but um, up until the end of 2002, then 2003, George Norrie took over as main host and art guest hosted from 2003 to 2010 Okay. Um, at certain points, he guessed earlier on. He guest hosted more, mm -hmm. and you know, when when Ramona passed, he he guest hosted uh, um, a bunch there to help him get through uh, that situation, which was it, absolute tragedy. In that his was story. horrible. Yeah. Yes. So, but then, but then, as he's taking up with Aaron. Uh, and and has the you know children with you know Asia and and then uh, later Alexander, um, primarily Asia though uh, that took his time and he didn't he he did not guest host that to that great extent it kind of fell off over the years say like two thousand six seven eight nine ten and then. 11 and 12, he didn't host, to my knowledge, at all. 2013, he started up then with Sirius. Okay. And then, so okay, the, Sirius the, is the, the fourth show. Yeah, the, then, Sirius, the, the, the Sirius show was called Dark Matter. Dark Matter, exactly. That's yeah. right. Our Bell's Thank you Dark for Matter. Me. No, that's fine. And then uh, I get, and then the, the fifth show and the last one would be Midnight in the Desert, and then we have our, our complete list, right? Correct. Correct. Those are all the shows. Yeah, I'm gonna post them. So, <laughs> I just like things in a timeline, man. I, my brain works well when it's kind of go like on, 
go on. I, I, I've got it. I've got it under under statistics. Uh huh. Under, it's called uh, the show timeline. Oh, there we you go. The show timeline. It's just two pages, but it it gives all the highlights of Art Bell's paranormal radio career. And, I'm gonna and, and listed, uh, you know, a lot of the major guests when they made their first appearance and how many appearances they made, um, you know, and when Art it discusses Art's five retirements. I mean, he, yeah. he, he retired. The only person I know who retired as much as Art Bell is Muhammad Ali. I mean, they, they, I think, are the two who retired the most. Of, yeah, no, and, you're not, you're not kidding. Yeah. Now, I want to ask you a question uh, briefly. Um, you said that you had come into some kind of legal issues. Was this related to the Art Bell Files site? No, I've never had legal issues with the Art Bell Files. Site. Okay, we'll leave it I, at that. I was taught. I think that has to do with why I don't take donations because I've had. Then this has nothing to do with the the Art Bell topic. Okay, then I don't want to. I don't want to pry into your personal fine. life. I thought it well, had to be related. A, the IRS is perfectly happy to pry into all of our personal lives. So just be. If you learn nothing else from this broadcast, beware of the IRS. Yes, please. <laughs> okay, other questions that I want to ask you here um, is how, where were you, and how did you find out about the passing of Art Bell? Boy, um, you know, I don't precisely remember. I just, I do know the, the this is, this is a credit and, and a tribute to George Norrie and Tom Danheiser of all people. But I thought they made the best, uh, tribute to Art Bell's passing when they referenced it on Coast to Coast. And yeah. I have that. I, that is on under Art's radio bio um, there. It's a one-page summary, but they they were just magnanimous and, and just – it's one of George's finest moments on radio to me. Um, that he was he was so gracious because they they you know they they were competitive rivals yes and and there was some you know and there was you know there was stuff about like st blacklist you know you know coast to coast blacklisted guests um, they'd say you can't go on our show uh, uh, if you want to be on our show I mean that's just a fact the the Ghostbuster gal said that. Um, and I, there was somebody else. Now there were certain people who were too, like Linda Moulton Howe is too big. Yeah. She, she, they didn't try it with her. Um, but uh, um, there was some, you know, the, the, oh, and they put on, you know, they put on uh, one of the uh, art, art had sued uh, David John Oates, you know, for defamation. Mm -hmm. And they, they, and just before he, he started uh, his, uh, I think it was a serious show. Just before he started the series show, uh, George uh, made a point of putting uh, David John Oates on coast right before Art's starting his new show. Oh, as, wow. as to show that, you know, we're we're competing with you and we're going. At, now, I, I haven't heard that show. I don't know what they went into, if they even went into Art Bell at all. Because the lawsuit was over, way over by then, and um, it was it was personally basically just uh, about attacks on on uh, on Art Belt. So it was more like a defamation, right? Yeah, it's it. The the Art had his lawyer who was named Jerry Fox, who was a very a big big attorney in L.A. area. Mm -hmm. Okay, and he he had him on and explained the suits twice. Now, I've only heard the one broadcast, but I have it transcribed. It's on uh, Art's radio bio. It's the last file. It's called Art's Defamation Lawsuits. And they um, they d go into detail. There were two different cases. There was one case in Nashville um, against a guy who... Uh, Is it uh, uh, Michael Barra? 
no, 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 uh, no. Bara, Bara, that there's a discussion. The it starts out there. There's a discussion with Richard Hoagland because Hoagland Hoagland knew David John Oates. They were friends, and they would I sometimes see. appear together uh, uh, on Coast with Art. Um, and then David started going off. Um, um, and uh, uh, I think um, Richard Hoagland calls David a lost soul. Uh, um, uh, and, and not as an insult, but as, as kind of a, a tragic reference. Um, so, but it, they discuss the, the basis for the lawsuits. That's why that's in the front. But then I get to the Jerry Fox uh, situation. He discusses the, the, the lawsuits, the, the Nashville case, which is against two people. And then uh, the David John Oates. And then was another person who was also sued along with David John Oates. Um, again, I, you know, I, there's so much information here. I don't have it instant recall, but it's, if you are interested in it, either listen to find, find Jerry Fox. Sure. Sure. That, we'll do that. Okay tape or look on uh, arts arts defamation lawsuits under arts radio bio on artbellfiles.org yeah i'm gonna take a deep dive into that and it's like, like i said guys for those of you just join a little bit late we're talking with uh, john steiger who's the creator of artbellfiles.org you guys have to go to that site if you are uh, Art Bell fans, because he has uh, an amazing throw of documentation, uh, just anything you want in related uh, in relation to to Art Bell. Fantastical uh, work that you've done is commendable. Um, Thank and you, you. Said you, you. You'll be going under for four years or two years. Four years. Next month is four years. Okay. Um, and and it's all at no cost. There's no charge. No there's no charge. Yeah. There's no charge, and there's no audio either. Okay. So it's just documentation for free. He would accept no money, and it's all there for you guys for your liking for your researchers uh, researching uh, purposes. So, well, what have, what what else do you have uh, lined up for your site in the future? Uh, any anything in particular well, that you're working uh, now on? Well, I'm gonna right now. I'm working on uh, a very interesting uh, fellow who I I moved someone a, a guy named James Templar. I had him on. Uh, under Strange Rangers. Strange Rangers to me is kind of like a, a, a mini hall of fame of, of just really interesting guests. Most of them uh, made just a few appearances, although I have Father Malachi Martin and yes. uh, Evelyn Paglini under there, and they certainly belong in the, in the hall of fame. But, um, you know, like Harlot the Witch and, and, um, David Polites, who we interviewed not till 2015, yeah. but he's he's amazing. David Polite, David Polites is, is I love that guy. Amazing, I yeah. And, guy. and 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 Nick Redfern with uh, Men in Black with the Men in Black he, shows. Yeah, yes, he, he's he, he's very, that's a very interesting show. It, I mean, and I'm and, I, and you don't have to just you should listen, try and listen to it, and then you know supplement it with the the, the stuff on the website. Um, for, for, you know, to fill in, right. um, but I'm adding this guy named Todd Robbins. Okay. Todd Robbins is the man who eats light bulbs. <laughs> and he does, uh, he's a sideshow performer. Yeah. You know, they used to have sideshows back in the day at circuses and whatever. Well, he sure. still does it. I mean, he, he, uh, he's, uh, it, actually he's amazing that in most people, it seems like go from New York to LA. He went, he originated in Orange County and ended up in Brooklyn. And you know, it's a, a week a week or so ago, I was listening to an Art Bell show. I think it's maybe a minute in the desert show in which Art Bell tricks the people that he actually ate a light bulb live. That's it. That's the show. Yeah, that that's is the show. The show. Okay. That's yeah. the show. I haven't gotten to that part yet. I'm only about midway <laughs> through it. But Todd <laughs> Robbins is going to go on Strange Rangers. Okay. And that'll be that I'll have 12 there. And so that's good. Now the other thing that I'm gonna be and, and this is the main thing that I have yet to do. I, I mean I'm pretty pleased with what I've done um so far. I mean, there's always more and more to do, more to add. Uh and and, and it will outlive me. I mean, I won't be able to complete it. I, I say that clearly on the home page. You yeah. know, I only have so much time, and you'll have to forgive me. I could have to be judicious in, in which 
files to uh, try to transcribe and put up. But the uh, the ghosts, the ghosts is going to be my major area yet of concentration because there's a lot of. It's not just it's the ghost to ghost where they you know tell ghost stories. That's, right, that's right, right, right. Those one. And the Ghost Investigators Society, which is uh, Barbara Macbeth and uh, Brendan Cook. And they went on some, oh, oh like 25 times. Um, and, you know, did the uh, EVPs, the electronic voice phenomena. Sure. Yeah. Uh, those recordings. Now, what I do, I don't, I don't transcribe the electronic voice, the actual voice. I don't do that. The, you, it, it, there's no way a transcription is going to do that justice. I also don't write down the ghost stories that the people tell. It doesn't yeah, do justice. No, it's right, not. Right. But arts observations, and there are many, many, many of these on each of the shows, are fascinating. And so I'm collecting arts observations about the ghosts and this is this is probably going to be a sizable amount. I'm 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 hoping for, you know, at least fifty, maybe a hundred pages on this. And yeah, um, he has a lot of insight into ghosts, and um, I'm looking forward to doing it. It's it's a it's a labor of love to do this. Absolutely. So, uh, yeah. So I mean, but I've only done uh, you know. I don't know, five or six of the shows. And there's probably, and there's, I think there's over 50 of both 50 right. ghost to ghost plus ghost investigator society. So I've got a lot of work uh, just in the ghost area ahead of me, but that's, uh, that's, 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 no, that's, that, my future. That, that's, my, that, that's what I will enjoy about my future. No, absolutely, and that's what we'll, you know, the fruits of your label, uh, of your labor, is what we we're gonna be enjoying, because fruits of uh, arts labor too. True, absolutely. Um, now, um, going off a little bit off of uh, quote unquote track, um, I wanted, I want you to ask, uh, I want to ask you about a, a personal uh, story of yours, if you will, that um, happens to deal with your personal experience uh, and the paranormal. So could you tell us your story? I have one. I have only one paranormal experience. And it's not that I saw a UFO. I've never seen a UFO. I believe in UFOs totally. My, if you notice, I, I'm wearing glasses. My eyes are uh, pretty uh, bad. I've had glasses since age six, and uh, that's well over 50 years. And... Uh, if, I, if we go out stargazing, people will look up and say, look at all the stars in the sky. And I'll say, wow, it's, I see four or five, you know, <laughs> maybe. Uh, so the chance of seeing a UFO up there is pretty slim for me. It'd have to come down and smack me in the face probably. Um, but I uh, was, as I said, back when I was talking about the, the you know, my UFO place and whatever, I went sure. out to Roswell. Roswell has a, um, UFO festival every 4th of July, because that's, uh, I think the crash occurred on July 2nd, 1947. And okay. I do believe in the Roswell crash. So anyway, they have the festival to celebrate this. I went out there the first time was in 2015 that I attended. Um, you And I drove from uh, um, where I live on the East Coast and um Stay, and had never been to New Mexico before, and uh, ended up in Roswell, attended the festival, had a great time. Now, I'm with just myself and my two dogs. My wife declined to come. So uh, now I'm, uh, I'm lo I have a week to get back home, and uh, I decided to do some uh, uh, additional touring. And the first place I was going to go was drive up to Montana to see Custer's Last Stand because I'd never been to Custer's Last Stand. So I'm, uh, okay, it turns, it's the Monday after the 4th of July in uh, 2015. You can look up the date. I don't, I don't have it right before me right now. But the Monday uh, after the 4th of July or 4th of July weekend. 
Um, I woke up in a hotel room in Roswell, New Mexico at in the two o'clock hour of the morning because I like to, uh, when you're driving, you like to make time uh, on the road and you can make a lot of time if you get on the road between three and 7 a.m. You can mm-hmm. travel a lot distance more than when you get in tra- travel uh, or uh, uh, traffic during the day. Sure. So anyway, I, I get up, I leave, I made hotel room coffee. So I am awake and I got the dogs up and the, we, we go out. and we, So we were on the road by like three o'clock in the morning. Now I was taking a road West of Roswell. I not sure of the number. I didn't take the road North, which is 285. I, I went on the road West, the main road West to head over to interstate. 380? 380, I think. 380, yeah. To, I was going to, um, through the towns of, uh, 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 well, Carrizozo's the second town. The first town. Uh, Caprock? Uh, uh, no, I'm not Cap. It begins with a C. I, oh. Anyway, I, I I went over. It was between those two towns. Capitan, I think it is. Capitan. Okay. Uh, but but I, um Anyway, I'm going over to Interstate 25 to go up. I'm, I was driving to Denver that day on the way to, to uh, um, um, Custer's Last Stand, which is in Montana. So, so anyway, I, I but I start out going west. I'm go. I'm on this. It's a two lane road. Uh, it's dark at night. I've never been on it before. Didn't know where I was going. Now that there's no traffic, uh, it's uh, all nondescript uh ranch land and it's not New Mexico does not have good farmland or or even good ranch land it's, it's scrub it's not quite what I, I I it's not what I think of as desert maybe it is desert but it I mean they can support some animals but it's not the best land but it, it, you, you need a lot of land of New Mexico land to, to have a decent ranch so so anyway I'm, you're going out through this ranch land. I, I passed Capitan um, on the way to Carrizozo, um, and, and there's no there's no landmarks out here. Hmm. All of a sudden, I'm in my headlights. I see about thirty yards ahead on the left side of the road a figure, and you know how your your headlights penetrate the gloom of the night. You know, sure. they, your headlights sure. go through the gloom of the night. Well, this figure was coal black. I mean, as black as black can be. And it had a um, hat on top, like a fedora hat. Boy. It had the shape of a head. You couldn't make out any features, no eyes. You could, I kind of, you could see the silhouette of a nose, but that's it you know no you couldn't see the mouth you couldn't see uh you know it's a so it's a hat a head and then like what i perceived was a trench coat or Ooh. something it could have been a shroud but it's a, a, kind of like a trench coat you couldn't make out arms hands feet legs none of that so it's like a head a hat a head and a trench coat and it's floating above the ground, probably like uh, at least a foot off the ground. And my headlights did not penetrate it. Okay. Wow. So it, it is a distinguished figure. Solid. Right. Solid. Solid figure. Right. Pitch and only one color black. I'm 20, 20, I'm 20 or 30 yards from it. Okay. I'm going 60 or 65 miles per hour. It's a two lane road. Hmm. It dematerializes oh, wow. into a streak of light. The light flashes across the car and in front of me. It goes, now, I'm on the right lane because it's America. We drive on the right. It was mm-hmm. on the left side. So across the left lane, across the right lane, and then the streak goes over there, and then it rematerializes. And this, on the other side, looking the same way, it was... It went across from south to north. I was going from east to west. Right. Basically speaking. 
it <clears throat> rematerialized as that figure with the hat, with the head, with the black trench coat, okay, on the other side of the road. It passed in the time my car probably went <clears throat> 10 yards. And, I mean, it's less than a second. Sure. That all sure. that Listen, stuff happened. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's, it's just, and I went zooming past it, and then um, I it took me about, I'd say, 10 minutes or approximately 10 miles to process what happened to me. But I was awake. I had had the hotel room coffee, and I know this figure was there. I saw it on the, distinctly on the left side. I saw it dematerialize. I saw the streak of light go across the road. I saw it rematerialize. The only thing I don't remember is what color the light is. If it was like, you know, a, 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 if it was a rainbow, you know, pattern of lights, you know, like the spectrum of color, or if it was just a, a, a straight, like yellowish light. Did I don't you, quite remember that. Did you notice any strange behavior from the dogs? They were asleep in the back. They didn't oh, know. Oh, boy. Come on, they guys. Know. They missed. Yeah, they missed. They, yeah. they missed a great story. Now, this, now, is, this is a single witness. They, they'd have, If they saw it, they'd have barked. They'd have definitely barked. But they did, they were asleep in the back. So, so, so um, you didn't pass. You, you you didn't pass through the the, the body. You just kind of the body no, just no, no, appeared no, 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 and no. materialized in the other no, side no. of the road. Yeah, yeah. No, no, I didn't pass through it. No. What was your What was your feeling immediately after it happened? I mean, I, I know that you know people get shook up because you think you're going to hit somebody, but when you realize that it was something that was probably unhittable, uh, what was your feeling? Did you stop? Did you keep going? Did you kind of do a double take? It took me 10 minutes to process what happened. Huh. I just, it was so sudden. You're in nondescript ranch land with nothing around. Huh. It was, it was, it was the craziest thing that's ever happened to me, paranormal wise. It's and absolutely, you, you know, uh, and this I, was I, thought about, I thought about turning around. I did think about turning around when I was about 10 miles down, you know, 10 minutes later. Okay. Because um, I was driving 60, 65, something like that. I thought about, and I'm, I'm like, first of all, okay, it's two lanes and here, and I'm going to, if I turn around, I'm going to go back there. And I don't know, it's nondescript. There's no landmarks. Uh, there's no guarantee I'm ever going to find where the place was that this thing was. That's oh, number definitely. one. Yeah. Number two is, why would I want to find it again? <laughs> it let me pass. Right. It, let, it didn't mess with me. Why do I want to go back and mess with it? It's you know true. what I'm saying? So I like. So I just kept on going. I I left it go. Um, so now maybe that's not very investigative of me, but no, I, uh, you could have. You could have. I think you. But if I look at the highway correctly, you probably passed Albuquerque. You passed Santa Fe. So you no, probably well, well, no. This is way before that. Oh, this it's is way it is. before that. But yeah. you're still on the 25, right? No, I'm I'm uh, like the 380 or whatever. No, this did not. Oh, happen on 25. you still okay. This is still... this is the two lane road out of Roswell heading west. Right, the the, the 380. You 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 yeah, were gonna yeah, yeah. you were gonna you were gonna you were on your way to the 25, right? Right, I, and I and I proceeded to go there. So yeah. you were by White Sands, the missile range. Yeah, I think I think south of it. Yeah, I mean, this was all at night. Remember, no, it's understand. still it's still like th this. The 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 incident happened somewhere four twenty, four twenty five, four thirty at the latest in the morning. Yeah. Pitch black on a on a July, um, you know, morning. Yeah, you were probably close to. Uh, yeah, you were probably about white sense the missile missile range. Well, I was, but I was on the road. I, I I was between the towns of Capitan and Carrizozo. Oh, okay, you and, were okay. So you were before. Yeah, you were way before. So no, there's a okay. I got you. There's a no no gal issue. There, there's you know that's funny. Nothing. There's, there's a, well there there is a cemetery right next to there. Right next no, to Cap I, okay. in, in between Capitan and Carrizozo. Okay, if you're uh, down to 380, okay. uh, there's a cemetery. It's called Nogal Cemetery. 
Okay. Well, I'll tell you something. I've, I did dr drive it last April. The, the last time I was there, I was in New Mexico um, again in April of 2023. Mm -hmm. And I decided, I, I actually went in 2016 to uh, uh, Roswell, the, se the second time to the UFO festival, but I did not drive that stretch. Will you be I, going there this year? Uh, probably not. I not did, I, but I did drive. I didn't go to the festival last year because it was in April, but I was in Roswell. I went to the museum and I did go to, um, I, I made a point to, I have one, I have a new dog. Those dogs have passed, but I have a new dog. And so I, that dog was, again, my wife didn't come, but uh, uh, I had the new dog. Now we drove it though during the day. I saw nothing. I, right, I'm I, sure. I know it. I know it was between. I, I, there was fence as I as I fence on both sides of the road there, like ranch fence. Sure. You know, which is not that great a fence, but anyway, there was fence there, and it was between Carrizozo and Capitan Carrizozo. But there's a bunch of places where there's ranch fence, so I don't know. Again, I don't know the exact spot where this happened, but again. Yeah. I don't, it'll, it'll be hard. It'll be hard to pinpoint. But, I, I, um, I don't think I'd have found it if I turned around, you know, ten miles from it and, and went back. I don't. I just. It's nondescript. Very strange. Um, well, th those are old Indian lands, uh, so there's a lot of, uh, you know. Uh, this this listen, you know what New Mexico's nickname is? State nickname or whatever? You know, like California's the golden state? You know what New Mexico's called, right? What, what, no, no, no I, I do not. Land of enchantment. Oh, that, you're right. It is the land of enchantment. I'm telling you, so much stuff. You have Roswell, you have Socorro, which is another major UFO case. You have potential one in, in Aztec. You have Dulce, that stuff, which I'm, I'm not sure I believe in that, but... And you you, you have uh, Taos, the Taos hum? Taos and stuff. I mean, and then you have this, my uh, shadow being, land of enchantment, I'm telling you. There it's, you go. It's an amazing state. Mexico, it's, it's, it's an overlooked state, but it's an amazing state. I, I love New Mexico. Yeah, I'm sure there's uh, there's a lot of lore. I remember I got into New Mexico because of that. Do you remember that guy that hated treasure uh, a couple of years ago? Uh, and he hated treasure, and he had written a pro a poem about it, uh, supposedly leading to somebody finding it. There was like a million dollars worth of jewels in there. You remember that? The fern. Well, it's, called a, that it's, called a, it's called the. It's called the fern treasure. Uh, I don't think I'm For, familiar with that. Yeah, Forrest Fenn was uh, just a millionaire guy who uh, okay. hit some stuff, gave some clues. For like 20 years, nobody was able to find the Fenn treasure. Finally, I, on the year they passed away, this guy was able to find the treasure. But that, that led me to uh, search because of the clues and everything. So I used to do a lot of search around that area. And it's, oh, it's so a magical, the treasure, this, this treasure was in New Mexico. It was not in New Mexico, uh, actually, mm -hmm. but the clue started off. Uh, the treasure was actually found outside of Yellowstone. Uh, the mm -hmm. guy who found it, a medical student, would not divulge the exact location. But, right. yeah, he was able to find it uh, out of the uh, Yellowstone Park area. Well, that's that's a long ways from New Mexico. Yeah, it's called the Forest Fern uh Fen, sorry, Forest Fen, I believe. Yeah, Forest mm -hmm. Fen uh, treasure. So, is that it? so are, you realize what Yellowstone is in three different states? Oh, no, that thing is a uh, humongous. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. humongous. Well, but it's mostly in Wyoming. In Wyoming, that's there. where it was found. Yeah, okay, Wyoming. Wyoming. All right, that's the main part of Yellowstone. Did you have you ever heard it? You know, another the top part is in Montana, and, the, and then there's a, a strip. Of Yellowstone, I know this because my wife and I are into the national parks. Mm -hmm. Don't ask me why I've taken her to fifty some national parks, or, or if she's gotten to. I took her to forty, and she's gotten to fifty some. Anyway, amazing. The, the, but Yellowstone, um, the part that's in um, Idaho, yeah, is referred to as the zone of death. Zone of death. Is zone that of because death. Of... there's a Wikipedia article on it? And why, why is it, uh, is it because of, because, well, because you can commit 
crime. Oh, I, yes. And, and, and there's no one to prosecute you. You I can get away that. with, if you can lure your victim into the zone of death, you can have at them with, and do whatever you want because you, well, I, I mean, look, you know, you might be, uh, you know, have to spiritually uh, answer for it. Yeah, but uh, su suppo uh, allegedly, there's no, like Idaho, there's no jury. There's no one lives there, so that you couldn't have a jury uh, for Idaho. And, and then it's like, well, could they do it from Wyoming? Well, no, because it's in Idaho. It's not a, a Wyoming crime. Or yeah, I have heard about the zone of death. That's okay. true. It's a very stri a small stretch of land. Right. Um, Uninhabited. Uh, totally. I mean, there might be animals, but there's no human <laughs> known habitation there. Yeah. My goodness. Owned by the federal government, but in the state of Idaho, and this it's that's that's what it's called. I it might be more fanciful than anything else, but sure, no, I understand. But wow, that, that's interesting. Very cool. Right. Just so, to, since you mentioned Yellowstone, I just thought I'd reference it. No, definitely. Well, that's a that's a very cool story, man. That you that you um uh, you were able to experience. You know, I've uh, I haven't really experienced any ghosts, but I, I've seen a UFO and I've experienced two possessions. So that's you know. I mean, you've been possessed, or you've seen. No, I've I've people. seen two poss I, I've experienced two people being uh, possessed. That's that's scarier than anything. That that that's scarier than mine. That's scarier than mine. That is uh, that would freak me out. I mean, you know, Father Malachi Martin's exorcism is is one of the most profound shows. You know, the, well, the first one, I transcribed just the first one. He did seven with art. Okay. I do know this. Um, and uh, the first one is transcribed. It's on under Strange Rangers. Um, I want to do uh, the others. But the thing is, I don't think I'm going to do them in full because Father Malachi Martin was a very, very interesting guest. I mean, they're all great shows, but a lot, some of them verge into, you know, religion and, and kind of non paranormal topics, you know? Oh. And, and for me, the, the most fascinating thing that Father Malachi and, uh, and, uh, uh, Martin and Art uh, uh, spoke about was the uh, um, the possessions. The, the, well, the, and exorcism. And Father Malachi Martin could rid people of the demon that was possessing them. Right. I believe that. I oh no, that's that's a hundred percent. That's a hundred percent. And I, I don't know if you knew, but my I'm a medical doctor. That's my trade. Okay. And so I, I saw a, a possession in the hospital, and then I saw a possession outside of a hospital. Uh, so yeah, was, I was can... someone trying to exercise them, or, or no? I mean, you know, not at the hospital. The, obviously, the, well, you have to have your your doctor's cap there, and uh, so it was medically mm -hmm. unexplainable what we were witnessing. Um, and, and then, as far as the outside, uh, I, I experienced it. Uh, at a, at, a, at a concert so the, the person got taken away in an ambulance but right. i was kind of attending to that, that might person. Not help them though if it's if it's a possession I oh definitely no it would definitely not help them but it was uh something else man i thought it was uh you know i've told you i'm a, I'm a christian so I, I didn't have too much fright of it i just thought it was odd uh the way that they presented themselves but it definitely it's sad it's sad it's it's sad and it's frightening and, and and you know Father Malachi Martin explained that you have you have to take them in a room and not have things that you know can go flying around. Like it has to be a pretty barren Spartan room, and you have to be prepared once you start the exorcism. You have to be there through the duration, and this could take a day, a day and a half. I mean, you have. To, because that demon, depending on how strong it is, is going to fight like hell to stay in the body. And sometimes the these events. people, yeah, these people are infested. They could have multiple, you know. Right, right. And so what? What happens is they, uh, the the demons itself, you know, and the Bible has said it itself. They they leave and then they come back. Yeah. That, well, that yeah. Oh my God. There's so many. There's so many, there's a myriad of possibilities with it, but they are fascinating stuff.
So for, for, the, now, for me, the most convincing evidence of the possession was the fact that the person's voice changed. And if you, if you watch if you watch uh, videos of people that are possessed, they have a very distinct movement to their eyes when you're speaking to them, and they're not you know the, the person that habits the body, right. it's not present as the demon taking over. Right. They do these strange things with their eyes. Uh, so I witnessed that, and I witnessed the change of the voice as well. Well, uh, let, let, can, I, I just want to ask you for your experience, just for, for my knowledge. Okay. Sure. You're in the presence of someone who you believe is possessed. Right. What, what, what it, do you have any fear that this could be contagious or that, that, that the demon could slip over to you? I personally don't because I'm a Christian. So I'm, you know, the Bible says that once, if you're a Christian, you are, you're, you're, you're you have the Holy Spirit within. So, so you, don't, have, you don't think you don't think a, a Christian can be possessed. It depends because you, you can call yourself a Christian, but you cannot be filled with the Spirit. Meaning that you know you can profess something and not really be 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 with it. So I kind of I know where I stand. My personal beliefs where I stand with God, and so I know that I have the Holy Spirit residing within me, and I know that you know it, the same body cannot contain an, a, a demon in this Holy Spirit. So in that aspect, I'm a hundred percent protected. Okay, so uh, you, you don't. You personally do not fear possession. No, I, I personally know because of both instances. The first instance, I was a little bit taken aback because it was my first instant. It was mm -hmm. in a hospital. It was in a hospital setting, and I was asked to do a procedure that I felt very uncomfortable performing on somebody who was kind of wailing. Uh, I, I ended up doing a spinal tap uh, on this particular wow. lady. Uh, and she was thrashing around. She was speaking in deep voices. She was just acting erratic. So uh, I'm thinking in my head, whatever she's got, <coughs> uh, you know, if I'm doing a procedure where you have to insert a needle in the middle of their back, you, I, I, you, I, 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 you couldn't ahead. sedate her. No, because uh, there's no, you know, there wasn't any medical indication for sedation. Uh, you, you know, it, things when medicine don't work like the movies, you, you have to right. sort of, um, you can't just sedate somebody because of their behavior. Right. Uh, you can restrict them. Uh, and even with that, you have to be careful. But uh, yeah, she was restricted. I think she had like two people holding her or mm -hmm. four people holding her. Uh, me in the back with a doctor trying to tap her uh, to do, you know, to do a, a spinal tap. And it was tense. Um, it was very tense. She was, you know, speaking in a different language. She was just, I mean, you can just tell, man. I don't know what it is about the possessions, but you, it just, it, it goes beyond any kind of, uh, uh, you know, pathology that I've seen uh, in, when it comes to mental health or, or mental conditions. It's just, it goes beyond that. It's very, very... Um, the hair is heavy. It's, you know, the second case, I was going with a buddy of mine, two buddies of mine. We were going to, funny enough, we were going to a Christian concert. And uh, I'm a little bit late, and I so we walk in. It was at the House of Blues. I don't know if you guys have those in the East Coast. It's just, you know, it's like, it's like a House of Blues is your a basic venue. They have a kind of like a little bar, and then you have the, the stage. But as we walked in, there's a young lady, must have been probably in her early 20s. She had slumped over and fell on the ground. So, you know, with my medical, uh, I tended to her making sure, you know, start asking questions. Uh, if she had a, you know, if she had seizure disorder, or has she drank something? Was she dehydrated? And so she was there accompanied by one of her friends who happened to be a Christian and wanted to expose this lady who was not a Christian uh, to a Christian artist. And right before the concert started, this occurred. She fell over. So I was tending to her. I was asking her questions. She was very with it. Um, you know, she was t telling me that she's never had any medical conditions, anything. This is the first time. And the 911 was called, but they were obviously taking their time. And all of, all of a sudden, she started getting very, very sweaty. She started, um, I think she started uh, arcing her, her head or having this weird eye movement. And then that's when the voice started. Um, so, so she was originally talking to you in what you perceived to be her normal voice. Yeah, the normal voice of a 20-year-old. Mm -hmm. And then she got very sweaty. Her demeanor changed. Uh, she started, uh, and that's what my my friend that accompanied me, they were like praying on the side, and we were just waiting for the, and uh, we were kind of interacting with her and seeing what was going on. We didn't attempt any kind of exorcism or, or, or to do anything, but we just kind of, uh, just well, kind of I stayed with her. I don't know that you'd have had time either. Yeah. yeah, no, that's true. And I, I think you got to, you know, you have to be uh, well versed in, in how to approach that. Um, but yeah, it was uh, it was a weird situation, you know, very odd. 
Right. Yeah. So that, and then the, I had a UFO sighting when I was uh, probably about 10, 10 years old. I, I saw, um, I'm originally, like I told you, from South America. And uh, there was a particular day when there was these three orbs that were sort of, uh, you know, in a kind of one on top of the other one. And they had been there for about an hour or so. So the radio station were saying that they're probably weather balloons. Uh, but, you know, they started disappearing. And they just looked like your run-of-the-mill orb. Could have been maybe like 500 feet from what we were. Mm -hmm. um, but nothing, no, nothing. Did they strange. have color? Pardon? Did they have color? Yeah, they were. Uh, they were just chrome, chromed. No, oh. no, 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 no color really. Just chrome. Mm -hmm. So right. they said, well, you know. Yeah, a lot of times people see green ones or orange ones, or you know, whatever. So it's just yeah. Well, this was uh, this was in the daytime. When yeah, I was well, it, yeah, it's, it so, can happen at any time. It's amazing. It can happen any time. Any of this stuff can happen. I don't know. It's, yeah, no. The very, paranormal is is wild and untamed. Yes, absolutely. And, and so I'm that's, not sure it's t very tameable, you know, uh, the, the, whatever. Now kind getting like a, a wolverine or something, you know, it's uh, yeah. Do you have any particular like fascination for cryptids at all? Oh, uh, uh, well, uh like skinwalker, maybe, maybe Bigfoot more than uh, others. But what's your what's your take on the Patterson Gimlin film? I believe that. Me too. I do believe that. Me too. Um, I I I believe there's Bigfoot, but I think number one, I think they're very rare. I don't. I don't. I think a lot of times people say something is Bigfoot. It's not Bigfoot for whatever reason. I don't. I think it's a lot rarer than than some people believe. Um, that's just my sense. Mm -hmm. I don't have a good basis or backup for that, but that's just my sense. The other thing is, is I'm not so sure the Bigfoot, and 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 this is very debatable. Uh, is Bigfoot indigenous to planet Earth? And I'm not so sure that it is indigenous. I'm I'm I lean towards that Bigfoot is alien. Okay. Could it be uh, alien meaning another planet or maybe like uh, interdimensional? Another planet, another dimension. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, I believe it's inter interdimensional being as opposed to interplanetary. But yeah, I, I believe that they're not innate to here. They just kind of visit, hunt, uh, right. and then they do their business. But the Patterson-Gimlin film, I've analyzed it a thousand times. And there's right. just no way that back in 67... Uh, somebody had the, the the monetary ability or the the skills to build a suit that would generate that kind of uh, well. Also, the, the 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 part where the you know the guy gets thrown off the horse at the beginning. I mean, that's just <laughs> you know everything is just that they'd have to if, they, if that's fake, then the guy's going to get thrown. Okay, we're going to who would think? Oh, I'm going to make it really realistic. I'm going to be thrown off a horse. People don't you know, think to add that stuff, you know, you know what I'm saying? That to me, that lends authenticity to it. That's a um, very, uh, that's a very interesting. And the other thing is how remote it was from, from quote unquote civilization. You know, if you want to create a fake UFO video, you hike three to four miles away from your house, but you're not going to carry a, a, you're not going to carry that type of suit like hundreds of miles into like the wilderness, you know? Well, yeah, right. I mean, it's, yeah, it's, Correct. I agree with that. I agree with that. Let, let me ask you this. Did you ever read uh, the book Hunt for the Skinwalker? I have not. Tom no. Kelleher and uh, I think George Knapp. Um, no, I haven't. It's it's not that long a book. It's maybe like 200 pages. And this is Skinwalker Ranch. Right. And they went to uh, and they, they were there um, in the 90s. And one, there's a reference to seeing a Bigfoot on the ranch at one point. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, the Bigfoot comes out of a portal. 
Mm, I mean, yeah. Uh, there's, a, there's, in other words, they they saw this. I, you know, I, they saw this thing going through like a UFO or whatever going, you know, around the ranch. Right. They, they happened to see it, and it landed, and there was enough light that emitted from it that they saw this black shape emerge from the portal or mm. out of a portal and it looked like a bigfoot wow i mean now it's that's one page in one book but that's a that's not a uh that that's a that's a uh, an argument against bigfoot being indigenous no absolutely the other thing that's that's particular fascinating for me and that i've kind of come to conclusion is in, in regards to david polides uh, missing uh, 411 I find that all the cases of these disappearances where somebody was walking right behind or just kind of, you know, 10 feet ahead of it, that, that has to be some kind of portal opening up. That would be the only explanation for somebody to be able to disappear into the ether uh, within seconds, you know? And hear no scream. And hear no that's scream. The th that's the thing that always, fa you don't hear anything. Nothing. I mean, it's, it, this, this, yeah, it's got, yeah. Well, now, did you ever, did you ever see any of the movies that he made? I did. I saw. I saw the first one. I was disappointed. Um, the, the first one is not a great movie. Okay. Uh, they didn't. I don't. I don't think they knew what they were doing. Um, I will tell you this: if you haven't seen the second one, it's called Missing Four One One Hunters. Okay. You should see it tomorrow. I'll probably watch it tonight. I'm still having oh, time. Watch it tonight. It, it is so much better than the first. Yeah. So the much better. First one was it, a big letdown for me. Yes. It was... No, but there, there's two. I think there's four episodes in there, and there's one about a hunter in upstate New York. I think it's the second episode. That mm -hmm. one is great. And that last one about, um, if, I don't know if you ever heard of Bruce Maccabee. Bruce Maccabee was a UFO researcher from Ohio. No, I'm not. Uh, he did. He did. He worked on. He worked on a, a number of cases. A long time UFO research. One of the cases he worked on um, was Ed Walters, uh, the the Gulf Breeze, which I don't believe. I think. I think he might have gotten fooled on that one. Okay. I don't believe the Gulf Breeze, but uh, Bruce Maccabee's wife is out hunting. And that's the subject of the last. Oh wow! One. Okay. And and it is that one, the second one, and the and that one, the fourth one, are just that. You better have a strong chair because it can knock you off your chair. It, yes. It, they're, they're, the the missing four one one hundred. Now I've only seen the third one once. Okay. It was it was good too. I I like the second one the best. The missing the, the one about UFOs is the third yes. one. I've only seen it once. I'm I want I might see that again this weekend because no. the Super Bowl doesn't that's true be so exciting <laughs> to me. It's like a repeat, you know. So I might watch that instead of the Super Bowl. But no. uh, we'll see. Well, we're in the subject of UFOs. I want to ask you, what is your thoughts on the Travis Walton uh, um, uh, case, if you will? I think, well, I think I believe it. Uh, I do. There have, there have been some, um, I don't know if I, there's, there's been some questions, uh, good questions asked about it. And the only alternative is if, if he hit out, you know, if he hit out, he made it up and, and hit out. Mm -hmm. But but how do you explain that? The better that explanation is, is that it happened. Was he, was he ever on art? Was he ever with, with art? Yes. He was, yes. right? He's on. You can find him on the guest list. Go okay. on the guest list under okay. uh, the statistics. You can find out he he was on there with his his with his brother, right? What a brother-in-law, brother-in-law. Yeah, okay. There's a whole big. Was his brother-in-law part of the 
part of he the lumber. Was, his brother-in-law was in charge of the of the uh, of the uh, uh, tree clearing crew. He was okay, so he was there that night. Then his brother-in-law was there that his night. Brother-in-law was there. So I think there were seven of them. I, yeah, it could be six, but I think it was seven, six or seven. And um, but Travis, you know, left the safety of the vehicle mm. and went out towards the UFO. No, 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 right, right. And, and so that's, I mean, he was. Uh, like a maverick or a, a you know reckless. Well, in front of seven guys, maybe, I'm sure they had a few beers after work and in front of your seven buddies. No, 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 I, no. They didn't have. Well, first, first of all, okay. First of all, uh, Travis is a is a Mormon. Oh, so no beer. Yeah, no, no, I don't no. think he drank. Drank. I didn't know I that he was a Mormon. Yeah, yeah he's a Mormon, um, and um, I. I would suppose that this the other guy was a Mormon too. Now I don't know if you know there's there's Mormons and then there's you know lapsed Mormons that be but people are Mormon they and they don't follow the religion. I don't know, I, sure. but they were they what when this happened. I know when this happened. They did not. They were just leaving the forest. They were just okay. leaving work for the day. They did hadn't. There was no bar. There was no alcohol there. Um, yeah, I wonder if it maybe the, the, the there's seven guys in a the car. They're all scared. Maybe we'll, we just wanted to show his bravado, well, if you will. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's more like a. Uh, I, I I don't. It was like a, a work truck. Yeah, it was a work truck. Right. Yeah. yeah. Have you seen the the? I think it's Fire in the Sky is the name of the movie, right? Yeah, but the, that's the Hollywood version. There's a much better version, uh, a documentary by a woman, um, Jennifer Stein. Okay. Jennifer Stein, and she worked with Travis, and that's that's really the movie to see if you want a more accurate description of what happened. Is it? It's at the one called Travis: The True Story of Travis Walton. I, it could be. I, I I just know Jennifer yeah. Stein made Jennifer it. Jennifer Stein. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So that's it's her movie. It's a, it's I've seen it. It's been you know probably five years or whenever it came out. I saw it once. Um, it was good. Um, I recommend it. Um, so, and but that that will give you a much truer. But see, fire in the sky. It it's it's. I'm not saying don't see it. There's some good things about it, but it's not. It's not. It's just not the accurate depiction. That, <coughs> Yeah, I wasn't sure if Travis contributed to that um, movie, but you know how it is with well, movies. They sometimes they, they always you know, change. I'm sure he, he had some involvement, but they don't. That doesn't mean that they're going to follow. They're going to. They dramatize it. There you go. They yeah. play it up. They're trying to sell tickets. They're not trying to show truth. That's a great that's a point. Difference. That's a big difference. That's a great point. Yeah, that's what they want. I mean, that's what they make the movie for for investment. They don't make it to be honest and truthful about it. Right. Um, what about the the what's the name of the other Betsy, uh, the husband and wife? Uh, Betsy. No, that wasn't Betsy. Um, it's a couple uh, in New York. New York. Uh, one second. It's a super famous case. Uh, the Barney and Betty Hill. Oh, oh no, that's a, that's a not New York. It's a, um um, it's um uh, so New Ham New Hampshire. In right. New Hampshire, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the Betty and Barney Hill case. They might have lived in Massachusetts, actually, but the, but that but the, what they were going home. This was 1961, and, and um, they were going home. They they were on vacation in Montreal. They took a short vacation up there, and they were coming home. And you have to understand. There's, there's a bunch of things going. First of all, they were an interracial couple. At sure. a time when interracial marriage was very a <laughs> distinct minority, you know, I mean, uh, the, the very rare. But um, anyway, that they, they they were they were coming home. I, that has nothing to do though with the veracity of what what happened. Mm -hmm. And uh, no, I believe I believe I believe something happened to them. Um, you know, their own doctor didn't believe them. Uh, the, the, the psychologist, named, his last name was Simon. He didn't believe them. 
but um, many people did. And my mother-in-law, the one who introduced me to Art Bell, she actually saw uh, uh, Betty Hill give a presentation. Really? And she was, yes, and she was very impressed. Um, wow. So, and then, I, oh, uh, there's an, uh, an, on YouTube. On YouTube? Yes. Did you? Have you ever heard of the old game show called To Tell the Truth? Yes. Okay. Barney Hill ap yes. appeared on To Tell the Truth, and, and his his story of, of the abduction and whatever I, was the basis of a To Tell the Truth episode. And they really? they had oh. yeah, they had him the the you know the the panel like ask questions of there's you know this him and two other guys, and they yeah. You can. It, that's on YouTube. What? What is? I did not know that. That's so much stuff to watch. Well, there's so much. Well, it's just you know. I mean, that's not that long. It's probably that's ten or fifteen minutes. But but it's uh, there's just there's so much out there. I mean, that's that's why you know I only see Jennifer Stein this movie once because it's just you know there's so much. What about so, the, the 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 Red Hat Forest case in the UK? Well, I wrote one of my plays about that. I know. That's why yeah. I want to ask you about it. Well, uh, I absolutely believe in Rendlesham Forest, but I also believe it's somewhat polluted by uh, the very tall tale of one Larry Warren. Okay. Uh, Larry, what Larry Warren's impact on it, I, he made the whole thing up. It's a, a, a hit, his portion of it. Now, Colonel Halt, who was the main witness of the third night, and then Jim Penniston and John Burroughs were the main witnesses of the first night. Could, could I could I interrupt you? Could I ask you, for the, for those that are not aware of the case? Would you mind giving us like a little just snippet into what 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 the what the case uh, entails? Just brief. Well, you can't. It's almost impossible because first of all, it happened. It occurred in England. It occurred in December of 1980. Um, it occurred, they call it a forest, but it's really kind of a woods. You know, England does not have big mountains and forests like we do over here. Mm -hmm. They they have woods, you know, like Sherwood Forest for Robin Hood or whatever. Sure. It's a small, it's like a, a woods, basically. Okay. okay. So, I, and I actually have been over there. Uh, um, I, I made a point uh, to go over there to check it out. Um, to Rendlesham? Yeah, Rendlesham. Yeah, it's 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 worth seeing. I mean, uh, not many people go there uh, just for that, but I uh, I went to England just for that. So <laughs> so a anyway, I had a great time too. I love England. Um, so uh, except for driving on the left, driving on the left is oh yeah, it's, 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 that that's the only drawback of England. The no, only, thank you. People are wonderful, absolutely wonderful. Beer is really good too. Okay, done with the the England travel log. Now you go to Rendlesham <laughs> Forest. Um, uh, it wasn't a very active. Uh, there were two Air Force U.S. Air Force bases there, and, and British also. But we rented uh, these bases. They were called um, Woodbridge okay. and Headwaters. I'm sorry, you cut off. What was it? Woodbridge End? Bent Waters. Bent Water. Okay, got it. Okay, RAF. They're called RAF, Bent Waters, RAF Woodbridge. The RAF Royal Air, Air Force, Air right? Air Force. Exactly. Royal, Royal Air Force. Right. But we rented them from there. And the, the idea was we would have forward deployment of our Air Force in case the Soviet or the, you know, the um, other Iron Curtain countries tried to invade Western Europe. This is all about in, uh, defending against a Soviet invasion of Western Europe. Like they did, you know how they went into um, Hungary in, in 1956 and they went into Czechoslovakia in 1968. Well, we sure. were afraid that they might, you know, they, they just do the same. Start a world war. Okay, so we're, we're going to have our defense over there. We're not going to have it in like, you know, uh, New England or or New Jersey, New York, whatever you know, we're going to have it forward deployment. So anyway, and we also, uh, it, it wasn't officially 
uh, acknowledged, never officially acknowledged, uh, because we actually violated a treaty we had, but we had nuclear weapons on that base. Okay, well, we had okay. nuclear weapons. Well, they were at Bentwaters. Okay, nuclear weapons are of vast interest um, for you related to for aliens. Yeah. Okay, that's what that's what brought Roswell. Uh, you go back to Roswell, 1947. What attracted aliens to planet Earth was Hiroshima and Nagasaki. That's my that I can't prove that as a fact, but that's that's my steadfast that opinion and belief. Okay. And that because they could now it took them about two years to get here, right? Because they came and they must have come from a long distance because they didn't show up to 47. But that's if yeah. I mean that the, the, the you know that's what that was Nagasaki, they were August of 45, I think. Anyway, um, didn't plan to discuss this. Um, but anyway, we um Rendlesham Forest. We okay, so these guys are on uh routine uh, patrol, Burroughs, John Burroughs, and another guy, mm -hmm. uh, and they uh, see lights in the forest outside the base. Now, normally, they you didn't go off the base because Americans only have jurisdiction or power to do anything on the base. The, you go off, off the base, that's England. The English sure. police are gonna are in charge out there. We're, you know, we're just, you know, they're essentially the military personnel lived off the base. So it's they're, they're like tourists or whatever. So it's, it's, ba it's basically like akin to an embassy. Well, it's it's a military base, though. Right. Not it's not civilian, it's military. It's a two military installation. But the 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 lights were seen in the forest, and this is um uh, Christmas night is I, I think it was maybe it was Christmas Eve. You see, I'm rusty on this stuff. I wrote a play about it. About you're do, listen, you're doing good. Okay, so so <laughs> you know, I'm in I'm in my 60s. So I, you're you know, doing I, well. I'm not I'm not quite uh, uh, Joe Biden's uh, level yet, but uh, I'm getting there. So mm -hmm. so anyway, um, you know, uh, uh, okay. So they did the um, that they they go out, they drove off. And onto the road outside the base, because you know, the, to get out to England, you have to go through a road to get. You, so anyway, they go out in the road, and they see the light, and the light starts approaching them. Kind of, it's like it's really freaky. So then they they went back in the base, they called it in, and they sent uh, down the guy Peniston, who was uh, uh, he was a lieutenant. I mean, which isn't that high, but, you know, this is, uh, you know, Christmas Eve or Christmas night. And, it, you know, who, and it's like one or two in the morning and who wants to, you know, be out. And it's cold. It's probably it's in the, you know, 40s or 30s over there. And so uh, uh, anyway, so they then Penniston takes Burroughs and another guy and they go out and they actually they drive as far as they can. They're going to investigate the lights and then they walk. They have to hike. Mm -hmm. they, 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 this is on Forest Road, and it's you know it's not it's not paved. It's and it's rocky and stuff, and the, the, even their jeep couldn't really. Uh, the, it was like a berm and stuff. So so anyway, they go down there, and uh, they uh, find they come across a, a, a ship, a a landed ship. Not too big, but uh, I, th I think it was nine feet high, something like that. And it's anyway, they couldn't tell. They didn't see any aliens, but they um, they felt that the guy felt a presence and he touches the ship with his hand and he gets this binary download, supposedly. And that, but then there's controversy about that it was as to whether that's legit or not. He says it is. Colonel Alt doesn't think it is. There's, there's also there's fighting amongst the witnesses as to who's more important. I mean, this is this is the terrible thing. You know, UFO people fight way too much, mm. and it's like you know the one guy's this 
my night's the most important night because I got the binary download from the <laughs> aliens. And the other guy is like, no, my night's the most important because I saw the aliens were flying around in the field. That was on the third night and all this other stuff happened at the, then. And they, they flew around. They saw the, the ship fly around the forest, weaving through the trees, you know. And then the second night, this, this lieutenant drove outside the base by herself, and she's apparently uh, could have. It, it's she. She's never come forward. She had a nervous breakdown, had to leave the service. But the story is that she uh, wrecked her jeep, okay. uh, and and then uh, and then uh, had to shoot her. She even maybe shot her gun off at the alien or whatever that she. And there's also the, see. There's so much to this. Peniston doesn't believe it's alien. He thinks it's time travelers. Oh, wow. Okay, He thinks it's time travelers. You, I'm not doing it justice, but it's the reason. You're doing, listen, you're doing great. You're doing good. I know, but the, I'm really not because there the is so much. Rendlesham Forest is as big as Roswell. Oh. Okay? And there's so much literature on it. You really have to read up on it to figure out what happened. You can't read just one book. Not, you have to read, you have to read Colonel Holt's book. You have to read Peniston's book. Um, so your, your basic takeaway, was it a UFO or was it time travel for your personal, just some personal I opinion? Know. I don't know. You don't I know. Just, huh? I don't know. I, I, it, in a way it doesn't matter. It's whether is, is it something not of our world? Okay? Right. And, right. And because there are people who adamantly say no no this is all an experiment done by the military they were playing with these guys um, minds and stuff and there was when they debriefed these guys they used uh, the the uh, you know the truth serum thing the oh, yeah. pentothal or whatever yeah, pentothal, and, and they, yeah. Uh, they 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 People claim they had, they implanted memories in these guys, and what a mess! I mean, it, it yeah. There's some, there are some messy. And then Larry Warren had this whole thing that he claimed, he claimed like the leader that he claimed there were three aliens out in the field, uh, mm -hmm. and and that the the head of the whole base went out and and met with the aliens, and and that they took film of it. He didn't personally take film, but he he claims he saw all this stuff, and it, it's just. I don't bl believe that at all. Um, no, that's just a little bit too strange. Well, it's just, the the it's a very strange case. Don't it's a very strange case, but it's just and I think that you can sort it out. My publisher doesn't, you know, he's he's British. He he, he doesn't he, he thinks it's a mess. He thinks yeah. it's, he doesn't. He, he doesn't think it's that strong of a case because it's such a mess that we'll never find out what happened. Sure. I'm not that. I'm not that um, pessimistic about it. Okay. Uh, I think. <laughs> I think it's. I think we have have it, but we just anyway. It's just. It's. It's, it's controversial. Well, it's controversial. But but it, any anyone, you know, an art an art interviewed. Um, Burroughs, and I have that on uh, um, under UFOs. John Burroughs oh, is is on under UFOs, and you can listen to it. It's I will definitely worth a listen. Definitely worth. Now, Burroughs is like the third witness, and he has, he's younger, and he has some a little strange ideas himself, but about what it was, I mean, he, he thinks it has to do with weapons and whatever. I don't, I don't know. Anyway, it's uh, I, he has a book too. You read his book. It, they're all they're all. It's every every for every witness is a different opinion. It's sure, yeah. Well, John, I I want to thank you. I know I'm running you up here close to midnight. Um, I want to really sincerely thank you for your for sharing your your time with us, for sharing your knowledge, and uh, for sharing uh, your hard work. Thank you that you that you've provided for the artbellfiles.org that I encourage everybody to visit. You're welcome here anytime, and you have my direct number, and you also have my Facebook contact. So if, whenever you want to come on, uh, I'd love to have you back. And I enjoyed uh, talking to you, and uh, a lot of a lot of good comments coming out. Um, 
so we appreciate I, I I appreciate you for for being here. Well, I appreciate your having this forum and uh, uh, you know uh, talking to people about UFOs and the paranormal. It's a fascinating subject. It's it it's endlessly fascinating. Absolutely. And, uh, so uh, uh, we just you know we've got to continue till we uh, hopefully we'll uh, find some answers in our lifetimes. That's correct. Well, thank you so much, John. Thank you again for uh, for everything that you provided for us. And uh, yeah, welcome. You're, you're a friend of the show. Whenever you want to come, just uh, text me and uh, I'll have you on in a minute. Thank you very much for having me. Have a wonderful weekend. You too, my friend. God bless you. Take care. Thank you so much. Good night. Good night, John. Take care. Uh, wonderful. Uh, Wonderful guest. We were, uh, yeah, it's been awesome. Very, very uh, knowledgeable uh, guy. Amazing. Uh, I was just, you know, yeah, I was uh, impressed. Uh, I'm sure we're going to have him. I want to have him um, on the show for, for the future, for for absolutely, for sure. Guys, uh, do me a favor. Go ahead and, and go to his website <clears throat> for for all the Art Bell uh, fans, which is pretty much everybody here. ArtBellFiles.org. It's everything is free. Uh, everything is in, in order. I mean, the, he takes a lot of time and dedication. His website is pristine. It's easy to navigate. Um, yeah, just go on it and, and, and enjoy it. He has a lot, a lot of stuff. And uh, I, I'm glad that I was able to find it. And uh, I'm sure that you will be glad to visit it. Thank you once again. Go ahead and like the show and please promote it to your friends so we can keep growing. Visit us at our uh, Art Bell sister site where we have, uh, I'm putting a, a lot of uh, Art Bell's old programs and that is at youtube.com forward slash at Art Bell Files, which funny enough matches um, the matches John's website. That's serendipity right there. Uh, so yeah, go ahead. Uh, we'll, we'll be back on Monday. Um, and then I wish you guys to have a good blessed uh, weekend. Enjoy the game. Don't bet money uh, on uh, on the outcomes. And uh, I think I'm going to go for the 49ers from California, being from California. 49ers haven't won it in a long time. I'm, I'm a Raiders fan, but I'll root for the 49ers. So with that being said, guys, take care. Take care of each other and keep pursuing adventure. God bless you guys. Take care.